Yes. I came, I came down this evening from my city. You women know how to do this <laughs> miracle. And you are looking so great. Thank you, sir. How did you find the time? <laughs> When you create it, you find it. When you manage time, you always find one. And you don't look tired? <laughs> no, I'm not. Wow. <laughs> miracle workers, miracle <laughs> workers. Yes, we can. We women, we hold our word, you know, when we want to. Yeah, you know, it's a good idea that God didn't just create men. <laughs> I think if God had created only men, uh, we would have killed them. <laughs> each other finish <laughs> <laughs> it would have been war upon war men would have just been fighting each other most of the time wow and uh, that would have i think the world would have come to an end faster than and much <laughs> more many more times than it has come to an end and even with women around i'll see how many wars have been taking place where men are in charge men, war is what rules Mm -hmm. And the reason that happens is because men are all about ego. They are out to demonstrate their ego and to demonstrate their superiority. So a lot of strong men don't want to acknowledge the superiority or seniority of other people. Uh, so um, it's uh, been a very rough world with men alone in it. So what can we do without you ladies? <laughs> That's the whole point I'm trying to make. Yeah, but Pastor, it's so wonderful when we have men of understanding. Like when you're a married woman like me, and you have a man you're married to that allow you to do your thing, allow you to travel. Yeah, for, yeah that's... It is wonderful. So I salute my husband if he's watching for allowing me to do yeah, this. Yeah, because some people even told me, you know, some ladies that their husband would not even allow them to go for conferences and seminars and things like that. Yeah, such men. It's a pity. Yeah, unbelievable. All right, let's go straight to the first question. At what age do you recommend that children, that children's room be separated from that of their parents? I would say as soon as the child does not have a need for breast, breastfeeding three times a night. Okay. If the child, uh, as soon as the child begins to sleep all through the night. So if the child is uh, independent enough to, be, you know, not independent, but I don't, I think th th it takes three months for a child to begin to sleep all night. You know, when a child, maybe you have forgotten us too, because yeah, I have forgotten. It's been a long time. Yeah, when a child <coughs> is just born, the first few weeks, that child needs attention every three hours. It needs to be fed. fed. And so the, you know, the, the child must be near the mother in that sense. But uh, once the child, maybe after three months, is uh, already sleeping all night, I think that might be the time. Okay. All right. What do you think? What do I think? I, I had some other teachings that you should uh, try to teach them right from birth. Okay. But I don't know how. Yes, I think that I think that that will be uh, proper. The only th reason why I mentioned uh, what I said three months or once the child, it's just to make life easier for the lady. Exactly. Yeah, I remember when uh, we gave birth to our own child, uh, my wife wanted us to keep him in the, ch in the bedroom, the same bedroom with us. I think I only endured that for two weeks <laughs> because, you know, it then... Uh, but because we had a room for him before he was even born. Uh, but still, um, f just for, to make things easier for the lady, I think she might, miss, uh, she might need a, you know, a few more weeks to, for her not to be going to the other room for her, for her to make things easier. But then it might also be tough for the man. So maybe you are right what you said, that it might be better to start immediately. No, that's what they teach, but I had mine right beside me, 
right beside me so that I don't need to get up. <laughs> I don't need to get up. Then in it's the easier night. for yes. you as a mother to breastfeed and everything. Twice. Then your husband is also sleeping there. Yes, by by my own side. Yeah, yeah so my husband is still there. We all together. So that's the question, right? Yes, sir. And second part of the question is, can male and female children sleep in the same room while growing up? At what age is it necessary to separate their rooms? You see, all these questions are some of the questions that make me to always say marriage is not for everybody. <laughs> because uh, not everybody will be ever be well prepared enough for marriage, for true, happy marriage. Uh, to me, for me, personally, I think that before you even go into marriage, you must, have, you must have thought about these questions and you must have answered these questions long before. Which means uh, you should have provided or made provision. If you have a first child, you must know that if you want to have another child, you must have another room. Even if the child is going to happen to be a boy too, or to a girl also, but be in the position, you must be in the position as a family to have different room for your children. If not for every child, at least for different sexes. Uh, but it's even more ideal for you to have a room for every child, but at least for different sexes. That is good. I believe even if you don't have the whole luxury, at least you can make a small space for each sex. That will make it safer. It's better to be yeah, different. It's better, yes. And um, as you watch, please share this video and send in your questions, okay? And you have to send your questions to pastor at sunday at .com. Send in your questions or you comment on this video as you watch. All right, the second question goes, pastor, I am saved in Uganda. I built a semi-permanent classroom block. I do what? I built. I am saved? I'm saved in Uganda. He gave his life to God in Uganda. And he built a semi-permanent classroom block with three rooms to help rural children assess education and prayers instead of walking three kilometers uh, to come to school. I am stuck and I cannot even finish it. So. Can any good Christian help finish the work and then return, use the classroom to give services like prayers? That's in Uganda. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have to talk to people in Uganda. I hope people in Uganda are listening to this now. And I hope that there will be people in Uganda who might be uh, willing to uh, support that work. So, I, you know, if there is anybody like that, please write to us. But uh, I have a big dream myself. And my dream is not just to bring transformation to Nigeria. I want to bring transformation to all of Africa. And, uh, but I am seeing Ukraine. That is the problem. But as soon as uh, the Lord allows me to leave Ukraine, I'm going to start to work in earnest in Nigeria, first of all, then all over uh, Africa. Mm. I hope that happens soon. Okay, talking about transformation, I'm sure you want to join the Nigerian Transformation Project. As you heard from Pastor, this is not only for those from Nigeria, but all of Africa, for Uganda, for any country, even for those that are not from Africa. To register for this transformation program, you have to go to Sunday at the larger blog dot com slash Nigeria. Okay, you will learn a lot and learn what to do with your country after we have gone through Nigeria. So you can even come along because Pastor is inviting people to join to uh, be the pioneers of those that will do this in Nigeria. So please go and register. Okay, the next question. My ambition is to be an evangelist in Myanmar. But now I am only a theology student. Should I continue my school to doctor? Or what are the benefits for my mission being a doctor in theology? Please pray for me. It depends on if you have a vision or ambition or dream, you know, that means you are saying something. 
to, to have a vision is to see something. There must be something that you are seeing. It's just like me talking about going to Africa right now. There is something that I'm seeing. And it is what you are seeing there that you are going to do there. So I cannot see for you. So if you say, what can you do with the theology, doctor in theology? It means you don't see anything. Vision is about what you see, not what I see. I don't have any vision right now for my ma. I don't have, I don't see anything that you see. Even if I see something, it's my own vision, not your vision. So it's important for you to know and define what your vision is. What is the burden that is on your heart? What do you want the cost to happen there? Then that is what will now determine what education you will have. Yeah, it is that vision, that burden that will tell you and inform you if you really need to do PhD or you don't need to do PhD. Maybe you need some, ki some different kind of trainings. Maybe you need more spiritual training. Maybe you need more training in, uh, you know, in other things that will really, maybe in medical services or maybe in other skills that will be able to make you uh, bring relevance and uh, in, you know, service to the people. So I can pray for you that God will give you understanding, that God will give you <laughs> wisdom, uh, but you know, God will not do the thing for you. He will only give you, you know, you know, he can only help you, give you inspiration. You have to work on developing your skills, on studying the needs uh, in that country, and uh, studying also yourself, what you are capable of doing, and what you should develop, and uh, what you could bring to the table. So, go and think on these things that I've just said. Okay, to help you out too, if you haven't uh, listened to a lot of, at least 200 of Pastor Sunday's messages on his blog, I think this is the time to do it. Because those messages will help you to be clearer on your vision. This I am saying to everyone watching now. And oh, so, 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 so people, YouTube might be easier. Yes, and on YouTube, Sunday Adelaja Official, there is a lot of um, videos there that will help you with your vision and with life in general. So do tune in, do find those videos and help yourself, okay? And um, apart from videos, we have uh, cassettes too, we have articles, we have a o lot of audio. messages, audio, video, articles. Books. Books, yeah. So Uncle of... Sam is coming oh out. Oh my God. Tomorrow is the launch. <laughs> Stop working for Uncle Sam is a book that not only you should have, but everybody around you, because it's um, the key to freedom. It's the key to really getting to be who you are and pursuing your vision. Even if you can't leave uh, Dr. Sam, I wanted to say Uncle Sam immediately. <laughs> At least you will know what to do to work towards getting to that freedom. Please go to Amazon and get those books. You can get it as order. a discount right discount now. Discount yeah. right now. By tomorrow, it will be double the price. No, no, tomorrow will still be discounted. But okay. from Sunday, it will be double the price. Yeah. All right. From Sunday, double the price. So do yourself a favor, please. Uncle Sam is wicked, as I wrote in one of and my books. And on Okada, people are writing me from Nigeria that they can't get it on Okada. Okada will st start from Sunday. So you could still get it for a discount price from Sunday. Okay. Uh, on uh, for those in Africa, that's they, are, they start a week later after Amazon. Wow, don't lose that opportunity, okay? Go and tell your friends too. All right, next question. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, sir. I am glad with your plan on Nigerian transformation project. Please, sir, in your project, would church building be included? Why am I asking? Why I'm asking is that we want to build a church here in Kano, but the cost of the land, the cost of the land is too high, and our church members are not rich. We are feeding hand to mouth. I am always praying to God to open door for us to get the land and the building, and the building. Maybe you are one of those God sent to us. <laughs> I have a burden in my heart, and I wish that I have the means to build a church. Please, sir. Can you leave that burden from me? Yes. May the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Yes. Uh, I think I am God sent to you too. Uh, 
But before, despite the fact that I'm ready to leave that body, but I'm not gullible. And I am experienced. I'm an old man. I'm 70 years old, so I have some experience. Uh, I'm experienced um, in human relations and in people's uh, attitudes and people's behavioral patterns and manners. So as a result, I have a whole set of rules that you have to go through before I could be able to uh, leave that body. So that your body will not become my own automatically. We have to share the body together. So I will share your own financial body by you know, giving you the money that you need. But you will have to also share, if you don't have the financial body to carry, you have another body that you have to carry. So all of us will be carrying the same, we will be carrying body at the same time. Only a different body. I will be carrying the financial body. You will carry another one that I will tell you about now. And the thing that you will have to do, number one, is for you to get yourself to take the responsibility upon yourself to educate yourself, to refine yourself, to study, to upgrade yourself, and to uh, prove to me that you have been able to build a set of a new set of value system in yourself. So, one of the major principles of me helping people in Nigeria will be that. People who are asking for money, I would demand from them before I could give them the money that they should prove to me that they have been able to listen to at least 100 messages, or what between 100 and 200. Not just because it's my own messages, but because I'm sure of the quality of my own messages. And then I just want to be sure that you know your content is prepared, that you are that transformation is taking place because it's a project, it's called Niger National Transformation Project, Nigeria. So if it's Nigeria National Transformation Project or it's, if it's Nigerian Transformation Project, it has to be about transformation. Transformation doesn't just happen outside. Transformation that will happen outside has to begin from inside. So my own uh, first priority is to bring about transformation into people's identity inside, personality inside. And I think I have the I think you know some of the most powerful tools you could ever use for that are the teachings that I have. Even though you might have been a pastor or a Christian all your life, but I just think that I teach about value systems that a lot of people might not be teaching about, and you will need to get yourself ready. So by the time you, I now come and I say, and you now say you need uh, some financial help, I will say, okay, give me a list or a proof that you have listened to a, a hundred cassettes and then you have to give the exams then I would say okay you have taken upon yourself burden as well not just uh, you know sitting down and waiting for me to take the burden no we take two of us will still be carrying burden only you would carry the burden of self-education and I will carry the burden of financing your project. Now will you call uh, self-education burden? I think Dr. Sunday is just uh, helping you to build yourself. It's not really a burden if you, you have gotten some wisdom. Because he's saying now that he, he will, uh, you will share the burden, but it's not sharing the burden. Because I know what Dr. Sunday Adelaja's teaching has done in my life. Within a short period that I really took out time and got some sense, was some common sense to listen to his teachings and start to practice, most importantly. It will take you to places that you never knew, you have never been able to get to in 30, 40 years. Just give it a try, okay? You know, as a confirmation of what you have just said, uh, this morning, actually, it happened this morning, I was talking with uh, a gentleman, a pastor as well in Nigeria, maybe he's listening to us now, Pastor Edwin, and uh, he called me because we, he was, I proposed to him that uh, if he wants, he, he, might, he could be able to he could arrange a team of people, about maybe as many as 20 or 30 people or 40 people in Nigeria, that we have some contract or some job that we could give out to people in Nigeria. And then I have one of my assistants here who was going to teach them, uh, train them, and then, uh, uh, you know, then they will be paid for it. So at the end of the day, he was telling me that people in Nigeria, 
uh, that a lot of people that, okay, he came up with, like, with let's say, 20 people, and now he's only left with six people. <laughs> the, the work has not even started, just the training. Wow. <laughs> so I said, what is the problem? He said the level of uh, thoroughness, thoroughness, or the level of med, 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 uh, med, med, what do you call it? Meticulosity or meticulousness, and um, you know that is needed in the work that people in Nigeria are not used to it. Yeah. That they are not used to doing things in very details, and that they don't like it. They it's too much stress for them. <laughs> so I said, what they want. He said, well, they just, you know, they want to do something that will give them money immediately. They don't, don't want to. Okay. Said, <laughs> but then he said, the people who have agreed to pay the price of training themselves, acquiring skills, he said, including himself, he said he has discovered that those demands, he even told me, he said, Pastor, your teachings are good, but working with you is even more thorough <laughs> than uh, the teachings. Your teachings are thorough, but working with you is more details. And he said, those details I've discovered, that those t details are actually for our own good. Mm. He said he has discovered, and those people who have stayed back have discovered that it's actually making them better. He's developing skills in them. Right. He's developing capacity in them. And, uh, and that, uh, you know, that we are becoming better, and that you are still paying us for it. Yes. That you are training us to acquire skills, to be better, to be competitive, and then you are still paying us for it. I said, yes. The people who are editing my books also, people who, who are working with, I said one of them uh, from Nigeria also who was editing for me, after returning the book three times, the person just got out there. I said, okay, please take pastor. I'm sorry, I cannot do the work. You can make you pay me for whatever I've done. But I don't pay me for what I don't finish you. Yes. But I just said, okay, let me just pay him a little bit. Otherwise, I don't to go into cry and say, you know, pastor, to, to uh, use them and they didn't pay them. But they didn't finish. I said, what will people say who have to, re I have to return to them seven times or nine times or yeah. ten times? <laughs> because people don't want to go through the process. People so. want to resolve. So this, but the ones who go through the process of editing and learning it, they are now saying, you taught us and you are teaching us and you are still paying us in the process. Yes, that's, uh, that's what I believe. But you must be willing to pay to the, I mean, the price of going through the process. Yes, I believe that uh, Pastor Edwin should give those guys your teachings on delayed gratification for them to really know that it's not by sharp sharp. <laughs> they have to go through the process to really refine themselves and, sharp come, sharp. Out <laughs> and come out like gold. Okay, the next question says, okay, meanwhile, please send in your questions as you watch. Share this video. Send your questions in the comments or you go to pastor at sundayadelajablog.com. Okay? That is the blog. Yes. If they need to write their question, they must write to the email. Pastor, pastor at sundayadelajablog.com. Okay, that's the email. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. Or you write them in the comments, okay, and we get to them. Share this video, please, and call your friends to, to watch. Okay, the next question says, what will you use as an evidence and proof that the Father, Son, and Spirit are one and the same? What, what well, will you use as an evidence to prove that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are one and the same? Well, what's my own business there? Why should I be proving that? <laughs> maybe they heard you make a statement or something, I don't know. Or I, maybe uh, I don't have anything to prove. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one who invented that. <laughs> As the one who invented it now to go and prove that they are the same. Mm. Uh, if it's the Bible that said that, hey, make yeah, the Bible prove to you. If it is God that said that, let God prove to you. Am I the, it's not, I'm not the author. <laughs> it is what I author that I can defend. Okay. Jesus or you want said, to help them? Jesus said that he and the Father are one. So that's your own proof. Find it in the Bible. <laughs> I don't know the verse, so find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the next question. We have seen irreligious couples with a very pleasant and successful marital experience. So, does this go to prove that it's practically unnecessary to seek God's will before getting married? For, 
in general, people who have been listening to me, they will tell you that there is a statement I make that um, a lot of religious people find very difficult to swallow. And that statement says that for you to be successful on earth mm -hmm. or for you to rule on earth, that you need more faith in yourself than in God. Uh, same thing with life in general. For you to be successful in any endeavor on the earth, you don't need God. When it comes to earthly business or earthly endeavor, God has already made every provision for you to be successful on the earth, even without him, even without believing in him. The only difference is this, that for you to be successful in, let's say, marriage, you need to know the ingredients. You need to know the principles, the laws. So if you know the laws and apply, you'll be successful, just like in every other sphere of life. But if you die without God and without believing in God, then you go to hell. But, but on earth, you could not be, you might not be a Christian, but know the principles that for successful marriage, even more than Christians. And Christians will be divorcing, Christians will be fighting, Christians will be, uh, you know, having problems in their own marriage. And you, who just apply normal God principles, because those, every principle are from God. If you just apply them to your marriage, you have even better marriage than the Christians. Okay. And I call those principles and laws the marriage know-how. Yes. You have to know, know the know-how. You know how we say in technical terms, technical know-how. You yes. have to also know the marriage know-how for your marriage to work because marriage is not just spiritual. It's more physical. It's life. It's life. It's life on earth. Yeah. You have to marry your wife. You have to be there. You have to sleep with your wife. So you don't have to... The religious people, you know, they have spiritualized everything and thinking God will come from heaven and do things, okay? So it if is, you... It is an earthly business. Yes. It's an earthly business. Yes. So if you know the laws and principles, your marriage will work, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. Okay. Send in your questions, please, and share this video. The next question is, how can one defeat the fear of public speaking? I mean speaking in the public, especially when one loves it, but due to fear, he or she is running away from it. The, the, and the, the fear of speaking in public, like any other fear, could be defeated through adequate preparation. Uh, if you prepare very well, you will defeat it. Uh, first of all, prepare by knowing your subject. Secondly, prepare by meditation or meditating and prepare through visualization. So if you use those three instruments or those three keys uh, to prepare yourself, you will discover that public speaking will be easy. All right, preparation. And can I add that? Know your subject. Okay. Meditation, meditation, visualization. Visualization. Can I add practice? Oh, yes. Because I remember when I used to I stand in the stage at Golden Bass, I would shake like, <laughs> shake so well. But now. You used to run away. Yeah, I used to run away. Even one time I wanted <laughs> you to speak, you were quickly running yes, away. Yes, but now <laughs> it's very easy. So you, you like the, the live light. <laughs> So get prepared, meditate, and practice. Yes. Then you will get it. Send in your questions, please, and share this video. And um, the next question. Thank you, Pastor, for equipping the saints for ministry. We really appreciate you. My question. In Colossians 1.22, it says, We are holy and blameless without a single fault because of the blood of Jesus. If we do not fulfill our assignment on earth, will we go to heaven or will we be called the wicked servant and be sent to hell? 
if you do not fulfill your assignment on the earth, you might go to heaven because um, heaven is, uh, you know, is procured or secured for us thanks to the sacrifice that Jesus uh, you know, rendered for us, what Jesus did. And if you acknowledge his uh, redemptive power, his uh, sacrifice, and you receive and accept what he has done for you, uh, and you know you are you know, following him on earth, that basically secures your salvation and eternal life. But uh, if you don't fulfill your mandate and your mission on earth, you stand a very g great risk of uh, not receiving any reward, uh, sometimes maybe even of not being qualified for eternal life because in the case of uh, the people that uh, were given the talents, the other man was sent to, the, to hell, to the place, to hell fire, to a place where there's you know, gnashing of teeth and fire, unquenchable fire, just because he did not use his talent. So that's a big risk there because that's a, a, a parable that clearly tells us that salvation is also connected not just to what Jesus has done, but it's also connected to our gifts and our talents. So I would rather not just be saved, but also serve God, use my talents, to be sure. Mm. We have to be saved and serve God. I had a statement recently. Somebody said that our main purpose on earth, our main and only purpose on earth, is to go to heaven. <laughs> you know, so what, what is your say about that? If that is our <coughs> main, main purpose on earth, then that purpose has been fulfilled. <laughs> so what, then God should go ahead and just kill all of us and take us to heaven. So if that, that, are, that is an argument that could be easily defeated. If our main purpose on earth is to go to heaven, then immediately we get saved before we backslide, <laughs> before we succeed in backsliding. We should be taken to heaven immediately if that is the ultimate goal. Because what happens is that once you get saved, you get to heaven. You are already in heaven once you are saved. Mm -hmm. So if we are already saved and we are already in heaven, our names are already written in heaven, and we have already been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, so why, what are we then doing here? Why are we left behind? So that is a sheep and uh, you know, easy argument to defeat. Exactly. I think that way too. Okay, the next question goes, how will you know when you are re ready to start your ministry since you will never know everything anyway? You will never know everything, but you know when you are hungry and it's time for you to eat, don't you? You know when you are thirsty and it's time for you to drink, don't you? You know when you like someone or when you like something, when you like this color, when you like something, don't you? Same way you will have that satisfaction swell up in your spirit whenever you are ready. You know you are ready. You will be sure. Mm. You will see what to do. You will know what to do. And you will be sure of your success. So when you have that feeling and that intuition or whatever we call it. Just like up. when you want to eat, you mm. feel like, no, it's time. Well, just like you want to drink, you feel thirsty. Yes. And you see, no, I can, there's no other way. I must drink mm. now. Okay, so that's the way. You must not wait until you see the end of it. As long as you have those feelings, go for it. It's time. Okay, how do you convince a person that believes in evolution to begin to believe in creation? <laughs> just man, I personally, we just need to manifest Christ to that person. Mm. Uh, I don't believe that Argument is what is needed to convince people. I think what they need to be convinced is the manifested Christ. So for me, 
I believe Christ is in me. He is in me, I am in him. I just need to see any atheist or any unbeliever for them to, relate, to believe. Because I'm going to manifest to them he that is in me. Mm. That's all. So we have to manifest Christ everywhere we go. Even sometimes we don't need to talk too much because sometimes <laughs> our talk might, you know, Push them away. Um, yeah, push them away. We just have to show them love. Let them see that love in us, and they will be attracted to the Christ that we are talking about. Okay, please share this video. Send in your questions, okay? Any question at all, any topic, send them in so that we get them answered. And uh, we have a lot of videos. We have a lot of articles. We have a lot of messages, messages on uh, sundayadilajablog.com. If you go there, more than 500 messages, yeah? Or 1, on 000. a blog, more than 1,000, yeah. More than 1,000 messages, okay? Any version you want, <laughs> okay? Even if you, you don't uh, hear, even if you're blind, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow you are, go there and get some knowledge, okay? Decades and decades of messages from Dr. Sunday Adelaja. You'll be blessed. And follow Dr. Sandra Delaja on social media. On Facebook, you have to like his page, Dr. Sunday Adelaja. Okay? Then on uh, YouTube, we have Sunday Adelaja Official, where we have all the videos. And you know that we have a new TV 24 7 going on, mm -hmm. DSA TV. There you can get anything you want messages, worship. Interviews. Where is it going on? It's going on on Facebook, Dr. Sunday Adelaja, or Sunday uh, Adelaja Official on YouTube. These two places, you can get any of these. Uh, you can get the DSA TV viewing 24-7, every day of the week, every hour of the day. Get yourself blessed, okay? And share that news, okay? All right. The next question goes... What is the difference between speaking in tongues after getting filled with the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues? Uh, speaking in tongues is the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is for every believer. So every Christian can get to speak in tongues after they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So that is, the, that is uh, a sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it's a, it's a language of the, the angelic language that every believer has. But to have the gift of tongues is a little bit different. That is when you are able to pass across messages in tongues. And in that case, that message has to be translated or interpreted either by you or by any other person that is there. But the message must be uh, a special, you know, when people are ordinarily praying in tongues, they are praying in the angelic voice that only God understands them. And, you know, yeah, and maybe the angels and the Holy, Holy Spirit, just you and God. But when you have the gift, then it's not just you talking to God, but God talks to people to the earth through you, bringing the message in, in, in tongues, and then for it to be translated, interpreted. So through inspiration, you speak out of inspiration uh, for, of the Holy Spirit in tongues, and then somebody or you bring the interpretation. So that means that speaking in tongues cannot be interpreted? Yes. not. That, that's what I said, there are two forms. Yes. When you are just speaking as a prayer language, mm -hmm. when you are just speaking as uh, praying and praising, it's not always, it's not a message. Mm -hmm. So it's just God and the angels. Okay, mm. got it. All right, keep your questions coming, please. Next question, um, what is God's view on cloning? Cloning, animal cloning or human cloning? She didn't, the person didn't specify. Let's take uh, human cloning. In what sense? 
Uh, they clone human. Do they clone human beings? <laughs> I think they do. They are trying or to. Some, or some organs they do. Yeah. Okay. Some organs. Yes. Yeah. Like the liver. Okay. So what's God's view on that? I think I don't know if God mentioned that in the Bible. <laughs> I don't think there was a problem like that when the Bible was written. Okay. But I personally, first of all, I have to study that topic more. Mm. Uh, I don't think I know enough to be able to answer categorically right now. Uh, humanly speaking, but by my own nature, I think it should, be, it should be allowed. But I know that a lot of well-meaning people, Christians, say that it shouldn't be allowed. So I would like to study the arguments that are against it. Uh, so I don't know enough yet to be able to affirm that. OK. Do you know enough about animal cloning? Animal cloning is already available. Uh, it looks a little bit, I've seen some, a few animals that have been cloned into each other. <laughs> that looks a little bit funny. Mm. Uh, but uh, animal cloning has been happening a long time ago. Some people even f t say that zebra is a result of cloning. Mm. Uh, and some people say also bu the bull is a result of cloning. And, uh, you know, that... Mm, the bull is as a result of, I think, is a, uh, you know, with a cow and mm, another thing. Another uh, but, you know, but so it, it has been going on a long time. Only most of us don't know that some of the things we are eating even mm. are cloned uh, as a result of cloning. God have mercy. <laughs> so we need, to, we need to study this even myself. Yeah, so... Uh, is uh, <laughs> is a bit much more complicated than it appears. Yeah. So wow. experts or people who know better will have to inform us. Mm. Okay. Next question. Please, do we need God in our life or God needs us? Uh, it's both ways. We need God in our lives for sure. And God also needs us. But we are, I think we need God more. But God also needs us, not less. Um, we need God because we are coming out of God. If we are from God, we need God to live the full life. Just like the fish is made out of water, so fish coming from water cannot survive out of water. If you bring the, a fish out of the water now and put it on the concrete or pavement or asphalt, it's not going to live for long. It's going to struggle and eventually die. Same with the trees, the plants. If you take them away from the soil, because they are made from the soil, they need the soil to keep on surviving. So each plant or seed, or I mean each plant or tree that is uprooted from the soil will eventually wither and die off. I think the same thing with God and humans. We are also made out of two things. We are made out of God. That is our spiritual essence. But then, we are not just made out of God. We are not just of, made of spirit. Apart from spirit, we are also made of the earth, dirt, earth, dust. Just like if we stop eating, we stop feeding our body that is from the dust or from the earth, and we don't eat at all. 
we don't feed that body, we would definitely die. But since a human being is not just made of the earth, which will keep eating, will keep our body alive, we are also made of God, of God spirit. It means that, uh, yes, feeding our body will keep us alive here on the earth without even God. We don't need to believe in God to be alive. We just need to keep our flesh well nurtured, well vital, vitalized, and then we will <coughs> live as long as possible, as long as our body is living. But then, even if you don't believe in God, you can live on earth, but your spirit would have been dead. And if your spirit dies, and it dies not because it died physically, it dies because it's not having relationship with God. So without a relationship with God, your spirit will die. And that's what takes people to hell. But also, apart from that, apart from death and going to hell, do we, does a man need God here on earth? If he's an atheist, since we say he could survive and he could live without God just by feeding and taking care of his body, and he could, alive, he could live and be alive by also nourishing his mind. So it's like he doesn't need God. Yes, on one hand, yes. But on the other hand, the presence of God universally is a force and a factor in keeping everything integrally alive and together. So man needs God even as a factor of keeping the earth functioning. As individuals, you might think you don't need God because God is providing everything to sun, moon, oxygen. So he's giving to you anyway. You might not acknowledge him, but he is still providing all that to you. And that's why for lack of that acknowledgement, you deserve also to go to hell. Because you have lived out of him, from him, and thanks to him, and you have refused totally to acknowledge him. So we need God in the universal term, in the sense that God keeps everything together and blesses and provides everything to, for the earth. If he is totally with, withdrawn, and he will not supply the things that God supplies to the earth, then we will all be perished. But with all what God has already given us, yes, some people can live, individuals can live on earth without necessarily acknowledging God because God has already provided everything anyway to live here on earth and to function. But for not acknowledging the Savior and for not acknowledging the God that has provided everything, a man dies, a spirit dies because your spirit is from him. And without relationship with him, you die. And that death is separation. Separation between God and man. And that death is what takes people to hell. So, um, so it's not safe to say we don't need God. You might not need him to have your daily bread on a daily basis. But, you are, but because he has already provided everything for you anyway. So you are enjoying his blessings. Because when God finished creating man, he blessed the man. He said, and he blessed the man that he created. He blessed him. He said, be fruitful. So he has put his blessing on you, even without you acknowledging him. And he doesn't wait for you to acknowledge him before he blesses you. So that means you need his blessing. And thanks to his blessing, you are surviving. You are alive. You don't need to come to him and acknowledge him before he blesses you. He's already blessed all of his creation. So in that sense, you might say you don't need him, but you are actually living off his blessings. Now, does God need us? Since God is the one that provided everything and created everything, he needs us because God doesn't have a body here. He needs us too because it is only fear that man will be the one to reclaim back the earth from Satan, since it is true, man, that the earth was lost to Satan's dominion on the earth here. 
So to reclaim it back from Satan, man must go and take responsibility to do what they need to do to reclaim the earth back uh, by affirming the authority of God and of the kingdom of God and establishing the kingdom of God in every sphere of the earth. God will not come and do that because we need physical body to do that. And the only people who have physical body to do that are men. Angels will not do that. So God has to rely on men that are willing to obey him. So God needs men in the sense that God needs people who will be in fellowship with God, with him, understand his mindset, his value system, men who will be close to him enough to be able to bring his will from heaven to be accomplished here on the earth. Men, God is always in need of such men. And that is why God said, who should we send? That I wait, I, I, I look for a man who will go for us. So God is always looking for who will go for him. And yes, yeah, so man needs God and God needs man. Wow. What a broad answer, you know, detailed answer. But concerning, Too comprehensive? Yes. Uh, concerning God... And that, that's why I wrote that we have only seven minutes left. Okay. I'm looking at the time. Because that is why I wrote that book, Stop Walking from Kusam, because we are created not to work for the world system here. We are created to work for God's system, for God. So that's why that book is so crucial. That book is going to be one of the most important books that have ever been written. And I wish that people would go and get their copies before uh, the price goes up on Sunday. Yes. Stop working for Uncle Sam. We give you a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Yes. We give you freedom, number one. Yep. Okay. And uh, that means that um, if God is looking for man, and we, or most uh, um, religious people, have stemmed that man as just five food ministry the pastors, you know, the bishops, and all those people. What do you say? You know, I know you have them in your books. Maybe you throw some lines more on it for people watching. God didn't say that he's looking for five-fold ministry. <laughs> God said he's looking for men yeah. in general. So God is not looking for five-fold ministry. Five-fold ministry is just to manage and administrate the local church of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the, that will only be like 5% or 2% of the church. 98% of the church, they still need to, to be used by God. And God still needs them. God is still looking for them to stand up from those pews and go and fulfill their own calling. So what the fivefold ministry does is just to help those people. But the, the essence of the fivefold ministry is to empower all the members of the church so that nobody will just sit down yeah. and so that nobody will just become a member of the church. The purpose of fivefold ministry is to make sure that you always push people to God's field and you always raise up laborers for God's service so that God will not keep on looking, so that God will always have ready hands and ready workers to do his work. All right. So you heard it. You must not be a pastor or a bush bishop to do God's work. You have to subdue the territory that you are in. If you're a director of a company, that is your territory. Bring God to where you are, okay? We are almost coming to an end, and I will have to announce our next anniversary. <laughs> God Embassy Church anniversary is something else. If you haven't never been there, you have to plan to come this year. And to register, you have to go to guest at godembassy.org. And this time, we are not having only the anniversary. We are going to have HMT immediately after that. So plan to come to Key from the 29th of March till the 8th of April. First of all, we will have the anniversary, which will start from 29th till the 2nd. Then immediately after that, we will have HMT that will end on the 8th of April. You will thank me later. HMT will blow your mind. I am telling you, what does HMT mean? History Makers Training. 
history makers training. You will learn, then you will carry this thing now to your own country or to your own abroad and raise the history makers that will change the world. I think we still have time to take one more question, do we? Please. Okay. Um, what does the Bible say about infertility? And is it okay to have a biological child with another woman in the case that the that one's wife cannot bear kids? That question itself sounds insulting to me and to every woman out there. Uh, through by just looking at that question alone, you are trying to say that the only reason a woman should be married is only to give birth to her children. And if she doesn't have children, then go and pick another one. You are talking like you are talking about pig farming. or cattle rearing, so that they will give birth to as many cattle as possible. I don't understand, because even if you don't have your own children biologically, biologically, don't you know that there are a lot of millions of children out there who are praying for parents on a daily basis? What's wrong with going to adopt and take a lot of those children home and make them your own children? They are praying for parents. It is egocentrism and selfishness that will make a man think that if the wife cannot have children, that's the end of that woman. What about if she's not the one to blame? What about if the fault is coming from you? Is human relationship only about children? Or you just see a man as a womb only? A woman. As a, as a, a woman as a womb only? As a breeding cattle only? That's very insulting. I would not like to talk more about that. So this thing you're saying is so true. I have a lady in my city that um, took in a, a black child. She's an Ukrainian. The husband is also an Ukrainian. And you know what it means to have a child that is not your color in this city. She had a boyfriend, a black boyfriend? No. She just went to an uh, orphanage and, and took uh, adopted. Ah, I thought you said it no, was no, pregnant. Adopted, okay. adopted a black baby. Okay. And that baby is having a, a time of his life. Wow. And apart from that, she took in, I think, three more uh, white Ukrainian kids. Wow. It's, I don't know, I don't think that she, she couldn't have children. Eh? It's not even that. I think she just decided to do good. Wow. It's just too beautiful to watch them, how this kid calls her mama, sing songs for her. It's just too beautiful. I, I think we have to stop this stigma and this mentality of our people that the person must come from my own loin. I believe personally that when you, you adopt a child, you even feel better doing good to that child that has nothing to do with you than your own. Because you know you're doing good, not just because you owe that person anything, but because you just decided to be good, you know? It brings you more fulfillment when you, you adopt a but child. But that is true love. Yes. Because when you are taking care of your own child, yeah, only it's egocentrism yes. too, it's selfishness. You are doing it because it's your own. Yes. But when you are able to love other ch children that you adopt, it means that is true love. Yes, sir. So please, the person that asks this question, think about adopting a baby if it is true that your wife doesn't have babies, or maybe you are the one at fault, so should she go and marry another husband, okay? Let's stop uh, selfishness <laughs> and be lovely as our Lord is, okay? 
now we are coming to an end. We thank all of you for joining us today. Thank you so much, sir, for all the answers you gave us. Wise, wise answers, okay? So send in your questions for the next uh, Ask Pastor Sunday, which will be a the fortnight. upper a fortnight, the upper Friday. Not this coming Friday, the upper one, okay? Send in your questions so that we have them answered. Thank you so much for being with us today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.